In this video, let's learn linear search algorithm and I'll show you step by step how to implement that as a Java program. Actually, linear search is a very simple logic. So to understand that, imagine there are seven rooms. In this, you have to find a person called Satya. So what you typically do is you open the first room. Okay, Satya is not here then go to the next room, then go to the next room. So you go on searching from the beginning till the end one by one until you find them. Yes, we found Satya in the sixth room. What if we search for a person called Surya? Now again from the beginning you go on searching and you never find them. So not present. So a search may be successful or maybe unsuccessful. Okay, that's the basic of your linear search. Let's start writing the program. So int s is the search number which user is going to give. Let us initialize an array with some seven elements for our discussion. So like we discussed, from the beginning till the last of the array, we have to go one by one. So a for loop to go from zero to six and to access each and every element of the array. Let's imagine the given number is 6. Now we compare that with the first element of the array. It is not matching. So we go to the next one. Array of 1. It's not matching. Next. Not matching. Go to the next. Yes. It is matching. So the array element and the given search number are matching so we can immediately conclude that the search number is present in the array now let's take another scenario the number nine the comparison starts from the beginning it's not matching again it goes to the next it's not matching go to the next so like that all the way till the end it goes it never finds it now our program has to print it is not present. So this is where I have seen many students when they do it for the first time do a common mistake that they write a else and print not present. That is they believe that when it is equal it is present otherwise it is not present. But let us see what happens now. So you compare with first element of the array. Yes 9 is not there in the first element. But what will happen is now it will go to else and immediately print not present which is not correct because 9 may be there somewhere else in the array. That is without comparing all the elements that is you should have searched till the end to conclude it is not there. But now when you are comparing with each and every time you are concluding that it is not present which is wrong. Instead of directly giving the solution let us deviate a bit and try a different program that a given number how many times it is present in the array. So for example 5 present 2 times in this array. Let's see how to do this. So it's almost similar so far what we have written that is from the beginning till the end you look for the number which is given whenever it is equal now we have to count. So take a counter equal to 0 and do a C++ when you find it then outside the loop you can print how many times it was present. So now let us see 5. Now you go and look each and every element of the array. Whenever it is present your count is increasing. So when you come out of the for loop you have the count. So 5 present 2 times in this array. Now one more scenario 4. So it is counting how many times 4 is there in this array. So it's one time. Let's take 7. You're counting how many times 7 is there. Actually 7 is not there in the array. So the count is 0. So this is what indicates it's not there. So you initialize C as 0 and the if was never true. So C++ never happened. So your C remains 0. So this is the proof that the number was not there. So now let us go back to our program which we wanted to write. So 
come out of the for loop that is after comparing all the elements of the array and when you never find it so when the counter remains zero we can now conclude that the element is not present and your present logic remains as before okay let us confirm what we wrote for not present works fine or not so the search number 2 our for loop searches all the way till the end the c remains zero so when we come out of the for loop your c is zero so we can now print not present this is a basic linear search correct program but we can logically improvise a bit one is let's say we are looking for number five we found it in the second element of the array itself then why are we going till the end all the time that is just imagine you are holding a 200 page book a topic you are searching for you find it in the 10th page you will not turn the remaining 190 pages so now our loop unnecessarily goes all the way till the end so to stop it we can use the keyword break so once we find the number we are looking for we can get out of the for loop so this is one logical improvement which you could do then the next improvement is see our c is either a 0 or a 1 that is basically we written it like a counter so it will either get a value of 0 or a 1 now instead of wasting 4 bytes of memory java has a boolean data type which supposed to be for this use case like something is true or false so we initialize a variable called not present is equal to true and when we find it we can make it false so when we come out of the for loop if the not present remains true then we can say it is not present so this could be a better linear search program now i'll show you demo of various scenarios this is the program just now we wrote let's give five as the search number so it finds five in the array it prints present in the list and breaks and comes out of the for loop now if i give number seven then it would have searched all the way till the end of the array then it comes out of the for loop then concludes that it is not present what if if we want to do linear search for a string array it is almost same so i have initialized some string names here so i can literally copy paste this program and use as it is so which means logically there is no difference the only difference you should make is don't rely on double equal to sign for strings so use the dedicated equals or compare to methods of string class even if you want to ignore the cases you could say ignore case so now let me run this program so i give such in in all small letter still it finds it because we given equals ignore case this is the last scenario i'd like to go over so two different single dimensional arrays and how they map each other so you have a string array contains name and you have a long array contains the respective mobile numbers now this question can be asked in two ways one for a given name you print the mobile number of that person or a mobile number is the input you print whose number it is okay now the only relation between these two array is in terms of their indexes so if the search name is shankar now shankar is present at third index of names array so obviously his corresponding mobile number will be in third index of mobile number array I have initialized names in a string array and their respective mobile numbers in a long array. Now I write a for loop 
to access each and every element of the array and I compare each element with the given name when it is matching the name as names of i and the respective mobile number as mobile numbers of i so the relationship i have between those two array is their index now once it is present i can break and come out of the for loop now to print not present please don't write else here so have a counter or a flag so when it is present change the flag so come out of the for loop if flag remains true then you can conclude that the given name so let us run this program so I give input as Sachin it prints the name and the respective mobile number of Sachin whereas I give the input Surya Surya is not present hope you understand we'll see you in the next video